checking out the brighter light podcast with anthos and the homie chelsea this is our very first episode and uh i'm kind of excited about this yeah i'm super excited about this uh you know i hope uh, i hope we'll entertain other people instead of just ourselves with it i'm okay if it just entertains us though okay then i, I mean uh, to be honest i'm gonna say the same thing then all right all right <laughs> So if you make small goals, you reach them. That's right. all I know. Right. For those of us that are, for those that don't care to read or can't read. And miss the disclaimer uh, at the beginning. And they miss the disclaimer at the beginning. If you are easily offended or uptight religiously, this is not the show for you. So we're going to give you a chance to lighten up or turn it off. Turn it off. I suggested you lighten up, though, because you're going to miss out on some fun, I think. That's what I think, too. Right? Yeah. That would be my recommendation. Not, Just lighten up. And our intention is not to offend people. But uh, yeah, let's give them a moment to uh, make it over to their computers or uh, stop this thing before we get to talking shit. Okay. All right, so let's get on with this. Okay. So today's topic, we're going to talk about demons and demons shit. Demons and shit. Mostly demons, though. I don't know. Do demons shit? I don't. I don't know. We never. <laughs> young people ask. Uh, <laughs> demon shit. In The Exorcist, um, didn't she do something like that? Didn't she shit she in threw the... up. She didn't she throw? Up. She didn't shit in the bed. Oh. No? I I would have if I was her. She's under a tremendous amount of stress. I'm not trying to judge, but I think she should have yeah. shit in the bed. Um, <laughs> and she pu- to... she puked, projectile vomited. Yeah. And she fucked yeah. herself with a crucifix. Yeah. Damn demons. You know. demons or in my house, that's like a typical Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Do you even own one of those? Do you have a, a crucifix? crucifix? <laughs> no. Um. No. Not one of a satisfying size. <laughs> so yeah, demons is uh, growing up as a religious child. Demons was uh, uh, that's a subject that was just. I, I think I have put st- about demons. You're not gonna ask me what that what is. One of those things that you're not gonna ask me what put st- is what. You're not going to ask no, me that. No, I, I was thinking... I totally set, no. set you up to set me up for a fucking funny that I thought of in advance. Well, what is what is it then? <laughs> Just cut this part out and I'm going to say, what is the... Pss, pss, uh, uh, puts, you know, uh, when you, uh, when you uh, are, are still affected by a traumatic situation that happened a long time ago and it still uh, can trigger shit. Oh, okay. You mean like PTSD? <laughs> PTSD, yeah. Got you. I got you. Yeah, that's a knee slapper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seemed like it would be hilarious at the time. In my head, it totally worked. And, and that's it's the just... one thing that I pre-planned as a joke for this. So we'll see how that... 
We'll yeah, see if I, I don't should know be... how you're going to edit that and make it work out. We should see. Good luck with it. We'll see if I should be pre-planning shit or not. Yeah, um, my guess is no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's one of those one of those subjects where you always you you should act like you don't want to talk about it, but yeah. you want to hear like people's experiences or or. You want you want to have that conversation. Well, didn't we grow up thinking that if we had the conversation, that we would uh, um, invite him in, <laughs> pique the demon's attention? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were basically you were screwed because if a commercial for a, sh- a movie came on that was, you know, slightly demonic, uh and you showed any interest, the demons were going to catch you. Um, or a book, or music, or I still kind of feel some sort of way about uh, secondhand stores. You still you know? do? I do. What do and you, what it's, you feel about that? I kind of feel like I feel a little weird being in there. It's a little bit creepy. Um, okay, I can see that. And but... not because there's a rack of used underwear. I mean, it's a little creepy from a demonic point of view. <laughs> And that it's it's unfortunate because my husband likes to go into secondhand stores and like see if there's anything cool there because uh, he likes an- antique tools and stuff. Right. And he actually bought a box of 1928 license plates from all over the place. Right. And made like fifteen hundred dollars off of it because he sold them to a dealer in Florida. But what what keeps you out about the store though? the stuff because the secondhand stuff in the store and didn't you ever hear the demons were attached to second like you could buy a book right uh, yeah, no, and I know it would have a demon in it or you could buy like a, a article of clothing that would have a demon attached or, or to it or an, a piano or, or an antique mainly because I'm always right? finding pianos in the goodwill <laughs> you know but you <laughs> still always... you still feel like you might be inviting ghosts into <clears throat> the house or something no I just I don't really believe that I'm going to invite anything. I never had a firsthand experience exactly, but I always felt kind of like I do feel kind of weird or like uh, it's rebellious or something like I shouldn't even be in there. Right. Um, The same way I kind of feel when I go to a church for something, I always feel a little bit rebellious. Like, look at me, you know, Churches, churches are scary though. You know, they are, uh, they are, Uh With the with the music, the music just sounds so creepy, and the and the the chanting yeah, or whatever. I've only, that shit is. I've only me. been. Uh, what churches are you going to that chant? Not chant, but uh. Oh, oh yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I I totally get that though. Right. I've only been for like weddings and funerals and stuff. The organs. Oh, I did happen to go to one of those. I don't know. They're all over the place, but it's a. It's called a Church of a Fresco or Church of the Fresco. Uh-huh. And they have like these paintings from Jesus' time. Right. Like they're actually like legit old paintings. And you go down into the basement of this of this church and it's like dug into the ground and there's stones and it's like a crypt. There are um, ashes of saints. Right. And uh, there are these old paintings that are up in the cathedral of the church. And the one that I went to was actually um, the the church wasn't open, but it was nobody there, but the building was unlocked. Right. And I look at my friend from New York, and I'm like, how are they not getting robbed on a regular basis? And the people that live there are like, because it's a church, who would rob a church? And I'm like, thieves like all kinds of people would rob this place it just felt so foreign to me that was a total sidetrack but it was, <laughs> it was totally felt and i felt kind of weird like i shouldn't be going into this church there's nobody here it feels like we're breaking in and you know but they were cool i mean it was neat to see something that old i'm and sorry uh, did creepy. you not know that the topic today is demons and shit yeah no, i'm getting there it was creepy and shit. yeah you can just you can just cut all that out whatever <laughs> Eat a dick, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm saying. Like, there are some things that you just kind of, it's still kind of ingrained that you're not supposed to do these things. You're not supposed to want to do these things. And there's still a little bit of somebody hitting the brakes in the back of your mind, you know? 
And that's what I'm saying. I get that going into churches. I get that going into secondhand yeah, but it's stores still, because of demons and shit. Uh, do you remember? I first heard this in the 80s. And um, it was back when the Smurfs were popular and kids, you know, they had the Smurf dolls. And there was a story that floated around my region for a, a long time, ever since then, about uh, a, a toddler that had a Smurf doll. And Smurfs were known to be demonic because of magic and Gargamel was a wizard and all that other stuff. So they were totally demonic. <laughs> and there's an old story of a Smurf getting up in the, in the middle of a meeting and uh, walking out of the Kingdom Hall in front of everybody. <laughs> and I think... Yeah, I heard that. If certain I people tell that. it, uh -huh. the Smurf was laughing too and walking out of the Kingdom Hall. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. I mean, I wasn't at that meeting, uh, who but was? I heard all about it. My uh, cousin was at that meeting. Your cousin. She's not a witness. <laughs> but, you know, it was somebody from the congregation from like three towns over. They heard that and they saw it. They were there. Right. You know what's, but I wasn't there. You know what's funny is um, I was talking to a uh, Mormon friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a long time last summer. And I didn't know that he was a Mormon, and he didn't know that I was uh, once a witness. And we were uh, just sharing stories of how both religions were pretty much the same, but with their own little, their own little cultish ideas or whatever. And yeah, I told like him about underwear. that story. <laughs> magic underwear. Yeah, that's a Mormon thing. Really? Mm-hmm. Anyway, go on with your story. Yeah, I, I, so I told him that story, and he said that they had that same story in the Mormon community. About demons? Or no, about, about Smurfs? A, yeah, about the Smurf getting up and walking out during the service. I have a Mormon friend. I'm totally going to ask him about it. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. You have to come back and let us know. Yeah. I work with the Mormon woman, and she would not appreciate the question. I'm probably going to ask her, too. <laughs> Why wouldn't she appreciate it? She's super uptight. Like, she's still in. She's still a Mormon. She's super uptight. Yeah, but she's she, not going to appreciate it. If she believes that it happened, she will, probably won't take it that way. And be like, oh, yeah. You heard about that? I'll let her know. Right. Because <laughs> I'm going to ask her. And it was probably <laughs> yeah, her, her right? cousin who yeah. was at that service. Right. Her cousin. She wasn't there. <laughs> but her mom's sister's youngest boyfriend, he was there. And he saw it. <laughs> it ran right by him. Oh, did it? Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, there's also the. Um, what what is well? Just really quick. What are some other like when we talk about toys like that? That uh, weren't there some other toys that were? Like Care Bears seems like that was on the list of things. The Care, Care Bears? Bears. I didn't know about yeah. the Care Bears. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you, in my congregation, Cabbage Patch I Kids. actually. No, we had Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah, in in my region, in yeah. my region, they were they were demonized for some reason probably because they were super expensive people didn't want to be buying them for their kids <laughs> Maybe. that's my guess and because also back back then you had to throw down if you wanted one like people were getting in fights in the children's palace and kb toys for the cabbage patch kids you remember that huh that was crazy, yeah man. yeah i remember that because i got one um from a woman in our congregation i got one and uh she she gave it to me as a gift because uh, my mom had helped her right. and she was like oh you know here's a doll for your daughter and i was super excited it was like the best day of my life <laughs> you know because i wanted a cabbage patch kid my mom was like i am not throwing elbows for that now, get out of here did, did they come with names or did you name them yourselves no they came with names what was the name and they had little um it was uh olivia harriet olivia was harriet mine. yeah and she had red hair because i was born i had red hair but I only recently like, got rid of her. I had her until like just a year or two ago. Uh, and I finally was like, I don't, I don't need this anymore. Wow. And I got rid of it. Just a couple of years ago. Yeah. You should yeah. have kept that thing. No, I mean it wasn't. It, it wasn't like in pristine, con like collectible condition or anything. Snacks, snacks you know? stains and chocolate ice cream. No, I like no. She wasn't. She was clean. But, I mean, I had played with her, and she, you know, wasn't in the package anymore. I had a lot of Cabbage Patch dolls. That was just my first one. Uh -huh. But, I and they, I they weren't demonic where I grew up. I but. Don't, I don't understand the whole, uh, <clears throat> what was the big thing about those things? They were pretty ugly, and. 
somebody just said that they were the thing to have and so everybody had to have them you know that's what it was huh that's what it was yeah but when in my uh old congregation the congregation i grew up in the only one i was really involved with um we had a large puerto rican population and they are a superstitious culture like even the witnesses are superstitious right and uh anyway i really loved treasure trolls and for some reason those slipped through the cracks for a while treasure trolls. like yeah you know the things with like the brightly colored hair that sticks straight up and they're kind of got a little round tummy and they're cute yeah. and they came with different outfits and stuff oh maybe i so, don't like, know what that is yeah, so treasure trolls, and I had like an obsession with them. I had a bunch of them, uh -huh. and for some reason that was acceptable for a while. But I was uh, staying. I was really good friends with uh, two girls in my congregation that were sisters, and their parents had an apartment attached to their house. And usually there was like a newlywed witness couple that would rent that apartment for a while from them. And so, as it turned out, at this time. It was a white girl and a, a Puerto Rican brother. And um, he always kind of grated my nerves. He was really like in your face all the time, obnoxious. Uh, and I just, from the first time I met him, I wanted to just smack him right across the face. <laughs> and uh, I still do. I, if I were to see him today, like 20 years later, I'd still want to deck him. I know what you're talking about. I've you, you ever you just sit in front of somebody while they're talking and think... Man, what if I just haul off and just smack the shit out of this person right now? Yeah, and you think like it would feel pretty good. For, like it, it would. I would hit him really hard, and it would be <laughs> awesome. It'd be like the the best thing ever. For me, it goes but... from that funny thought into uh, the realistic reaction that will come from that. And yeah, I just feel horrible for even having thought something so silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, sorry, anyway, I mean, he just, he always graded my nerves. And we actually had several run ins, but this particular time, they were having like a bunch, like, I don't know if you're familiar with, with Puerto Ricans, but they're a fun group of people. Yeah. Like, if you get two of them, two or three of them together, then in a minute, there's going to be some music and some dancing, and you got yourself a party. That's when true. You, all you, all you meant to do was mop the floor, you know? <laughs> But, I mean, they will they will put together a party in a heartbeat, and it will be a good time for everybody. So, anyway, at, at, at their apartment, they were having company over, and uh, they were having this group party, a small thing, anyway. And so, the girls and I snuck over there, and the windows were kind of above our heads. You know, the, it was kind of set up. And I had this little treasure troll with pink hair, and it was wearing a little tuxedo and no pants. I don't know why they never had pants on. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I took that. We were just sneaking around being, you know, kind of half-assed hellions. And I put that troll in the windowsill and just set it up there. <laughs> and they didn't see us. They didn't know we were out there. Right. And after about... 10 seconds we heard a blood curdling scream come out of that <laughs> come out of the party it was like you know when you hear the record stop that you know music stops everybody looks there's this blood curdling scream somebody screams in spanish i grab my troll we haul ass and we run around to the house we go into the girl's bedroom we're just sitting there and a few minutes later the phone rings their mom walks into the room they're like um what are y'all doing what are y'all doing and uh we're like, nothing. We've just been in here uh, reading our watchtowers. You know, like we're all sweet and innocent right. and stuff. And then reading our uh, she was like, well, uh, over at the apartment, they just called and said that there was a demon in the window. <laughs> that cute little toy. Yeah, the, my troll. <laughs> and she was like, do you know anything about this? And we're like, no. Wow, that sounds, is everybody okay? You know, like we're <laughs> super innocent about it. And, and she was like, okay, well, yeah, it's very serious. We're like, okay, well, we'll read our Bible and be good. You know, like totally got away with it. Okay, so I go home. I go home. A call has already been made to my parents because first off, their mom never trusted me. She needed to be watching her own daughters. Let me tell you that. Right. Just, you know, get that out there. Of I was course. not bad influence in that situation. They were. I, I have, just had the trouble. I have been, uh, I have been in a situation of having a friend's, 
uh, parents being told not to let not to let him hang out with me because I was bad association. But he was yeah, clear, he was clearly way worse than I was. No conscience at all. <laughs> yeah, that is precisely this situation. <laughs> Only they were sisters, and so and I was the odd one out. So yeah, I was the one taking the fall every time. Yeah, I got home. There was already a phone call that had been made to the to my parents about it, like explaining the whole situation. Uh -huh. So I get home, and my parents, of course, know. Well, my dad knows that uh -huh. it was me. My mom totally. My mom is very intelligent and highly phobic of demons, <laughs> and. So my dad was like, hey, you weren't messing with him, were you? And like, because he knew that I didn't like this guy, right? So he was like, I know that you were over there messing with him because you're bad. They knew. My my dad did. That was a no I'm pretty sure. Him. My mom was like, oh, my goodness. She was like, oh, that, you know, what could they have had? It ended up getting blown way out of proportion. Ah, there were all no kinds way. of. There was. Um, Don't tell me they gave by the time we it. got to the next meeting, by the time we get to the next meeting, there is, um, it was, it had blood running down its face, ah. it had fangs, it was glowing, <laughs> it was floating in the middle of the window. <laughs> anyway, it, it keeps going on because of course now he's afraid of them right. and I have all kinds of them. So I'm like taking pictures of different trolls, like Polaroid pictures right. and like driving by their house and putting it in there, putting it in his, uh, you know, under the windshield wiper of his car uh, or stuffing it in the mailbox or sticking it in the door. Like, or I slipped a couple into his Bible at a meeting, whatever, no big deal. And, uh, so anyway, then they, they're having elders meetings and they had, uh, a group of sisters go over to their house and like, like just clean out anything that could possibly have brought a demon. Like they're going all out full, full force, afraid of demons. And I'm laughing my ass off. Right. Cause I'm like, this is, like the best thing I've ever accidentally done. Oh, and then there's a local needs talk. No way. About it. it did make it to the talk. It made it to a lo the local needs talk about a month later. So was it about demons or about uh, practical jokes? It was about demons. Oh, my God. Because that's where it went with this couple. I mean, they were like, it was obviously a demon. Like, it wasn't a practical joke. My dad came home after that talk, and he was like, look. I'm not saying that you lied, but I'm saying get all your trolls together. They're going to the trash. Uh... <laughs> and he was like, I can't prove you had anything to do with it, but I'm thinking that you did. So, so we're going to get rid of the trolls. And so I got rid of the trolls and then magically the demon problem went away for them. Uh... And I was like, you know, this was before Internet and you could just like get an image and print it off or, you know, Photoshop something. Right, right. If I'd had Photoshop back then. I'd have had wow. that fucker in a madhouse. Like, I, he would have been institutionalized by the time I got done with him. You know, he here, ended up having the last laugh anyway, but... Here I am laughing at these people at how <clears> ridiculous <throat> that sounds. But if I were in that congregation, I'd be scared as at those damn things, too. And I would get rid of them myself. Oh. Yeah, I mean, there were... But, you know, it was story. reinforced. It was reinforced with mom because she was she's still very very phobic about demons and um if you were reading a book stephen king dean coots all those off the table you were not allowed to read those wow. and and i come from a family of avid readers you know we all are you know, avid readers um those movies and i would go i babysit for my cousins who were never witnesses and my aunt would totally rent us whatever movie we wanted she'd be like yeah go ahead you know we're gonna go to this party you guys can watch Stephen King. I don't care. Right. Or the other movie. What was it? Or the other show, Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, that the, show was so scary to me as a kid. It was. Yeah, it was super, super yeah, scary. It was. Um, in search of that also. music still scares me. Yeah, and there was an episode about uh, about a house that was. Uh, and I actually didn't even see this episode. I caught the the tail end of the show. When the credits were rolling, and you know how the show, it would show like, you know, the credits, through the credits, you'd see clips of the show that just ended. And uh, yeah. and they show, one of the clips was a guy sitting up in bed at night and looking over and his clock is just spiraling. The time is just going really fast on the clock. And that just scared the hell out of me. No thoughts of, okay, this is just, uh, this is an unproven story. 
and this is just a Hollywood recreation. It scared the hell out of me that night. Or what were those um, Time Life books that you could get? Do you remember those commercials? And they'd be like, a mother's at home doing dishes. Something has a bad <laughs> feeling about her daughter. Yeah. Miles away, her daughter's hit by a car. Or something yeah. stupid like that. And you're like, oh my goodness. You know, you know <laughs> totally. Yeah. And they were just trying to sell some dumb books. But I was like, oh, you know. Or um, there was a movie when I was real little. I think it was called Phantasm. Yeah. Do you remember that? that? Yeah. And it's like a little, almost looked like a little ball bearing with spikes or something that would fly yeah, through the, the air and like cut people. What is, what I don't know. I'll have to Google it now. But there was something about the commercials for that movie come that here, boy. freaked me out. Oh, and then when Halloween would come and you'd be listening to the radio mm-hmm. and then the the any commercial for a scary uh, haunted house or a scary movie <laughs> or I was scared to death of the video thriller. The, the elders made him put a disclaimer in front of his video. Yeah. He, he was counseled for that. And that's, yeah. that's why he wound up putting that there. Um, he got called into the, I, into the back and uh, talked to about his video. So he hurried up and had them put that disclaimer at the beginning. Yeah, he got called into the back. About his... Can you imagine Michael Jackson getting called into the back room? Like, you know, you know I used to get called into the back room. And you know, every part of him wanted to just give them all the middle finger and be like, fuck you guys. Well, tell I think me what to do with my, back there. Tell me what to do with my video. Yeah, Michael Jackson, I've, motherfucker. I put millions <laughs> of dollars into this. And that was a lot of money. <laughs> By the way, um, do I sound like crap? I'm still no, getting, you sound okay. I'm still getting over this cold, and yeah, I feel like I'm uh, laughing like an, old, like an old man. No, you sound okay. Okay. Yeah. But Michael Jackson getting pulled into the back room. I wonder if he got pulled into the back room, or if he had like his parents. Like maybe they went and got his mom. Because I have a hard time believing that celebrity of that status at that time would be confronted. Uh, yeah, that is pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I mean, look at I all just of... can't imagine. Like, I'm all. I, I And for some reason, I imagine him getting pulled into the back room of my kingdom hall. Like, right. like he would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Which was just like a little room with some filing cabinets and a microwave where right. the pioneers would heat up lunch. Like, it was a <laughs> pathetic. And sometimes you get pulled into the library, which you knew that was going to be long yeah. because they had all those books there they could pull out and read at you. I, I wonder if so, uh, I wonder if for the rest of his life, after he left being a Jehovah's Witness, if every time he saw the Thriller video, it just pissed him off. Because of the, oh. the, the disclaimer that came on at the beginning. Because he'd have been like, I don't want to. <laughs> Can't believe I listened to these the whole... dumbasses. Yeah. Ruined my video. <laughs> that... I, only a couple of years ago, did my kids, and my kids are still pretty young, but did my kids, like, think about Thriller? And I think they did it for, like, a Halloween program at school or something. Right. And I was like, you weren't afraid of that song? And they're like, get out of here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and I was like, when I was your age, I was terrified of it. Does the, so you the know? actual song was scary to you? Yeah, if I and for way longer than is reasonable. Really? Actually, yeah. I could yeah. I, I couldn't listen to that song and hear it as for what it was supposed to be. It was just those were just words and I was trying to do the routine. Oh, especially the Vincent Price part. Are you kidding? Really? Oh yeah, he terrified me. Darkness yeah. Falls I was across the land. Yeah, but my um my mom had really you know, she it was she still is very afraid of demons. But I find that they also kind of, or it is also used as a way to avoid taking responsibility for your actions. Because <laughs> if somebody she liked did something like out of character, like cheating on their husband or whatever, right. she'd be like, oh yeah, well, that was demonic influence. Demonic influence. Demonic yeah, influence it, did take the rap for a lot of stuff, huh? It, it did. I was like, maybe she's a hoe. Like maybe she just <laughs> is wanted a little grandma? strange or something. Is it's it possible? Demon. She just wanted a little strange. <laughs> like, she just wanted a little strange. No, that was a demon. That was a very powerful demon. Because there's no And cure. I still get a little weird about like Ouija boards. Really? I I think I would play with one, 
but I've watched way too many movies where that goes bad. Uh, don't play with one, and I'll tell you why. You will be extremely disappointed. Because it was you moving the thing? Because, yeah, you can't even, yeah, it's dumb. Yeah, my grandma and I actually played with one. My mom messed with that stuff before she became a witness. My mom didn't become a witness till she was an adult. So all my extended family, they're not witnesses. It was just, you know, me and my parents and my siblings. And uh, I was at my, I spent a lot of time with my grandma. We're very close. And she had a Ouija board in the closet. And we're like, oh, okay, we'll play that. So we played it. And my mom found out because I probably went home and told her, yeah, we played with Ouija board. She went freaking ballistic over it. And my grandpa was like, he would tolerate the witnesses to, to a point. And then he'd be like, all right, shut the fuck up. You know, like he didn't want to hear anymore. <clears throat> and so he, uh, so mom goes over there and goes off on the grandparents. Like, I, that's my Ouija board from when she was a kid. She's like, I don't want it played with. I want it back right now. What? She's going to burn it, right? Uh. Right. She's going to burn My grandma's like, up yours. That's my Ouija board. I bought it. You left it here. It's mine. I'm going to keep it in that closet. You can get over yourself. <laughs> you know. So that night, mom didn't get the Ouija board. Instead, she waits till they go on a vacation. She goes over to their house when they're not there. She gets the Ouija board. This is what she tells me. She burned it, and it went back in the closet. Of course. She's like, I took it. I set it on fire. I open up the closet weeks later. It's still in there. Of course. And I'm like, I never saw you go over there and get it. I never saw you burn it. (laughs) And I did see it in the closet. She did, again, I did see her another time go over there, get it out of the closet, stuff it in a trash bag, set it out with the trash. And then, magically, it stayed gone. Could you? Ma- I, she might have said a prayer or something. Could you imagine if those things were actually real, how popular they would be, on how hard, how hard it would be to keep those things on the shelf? I have never looked for one. I'm going to get one now. You, uh, you'll find plenty at Target or Toys R Us. And, uh, uh, yeah, I've never looked. Hey, can you make I a, remember reading you make a, a book video? about it, though. Can you make a video of, of uh, the yes. unboxing of it and play with it on? Yes. Yeah, and we'll, yes. Show, we'll show it on here. Yeah. Uh, I remember I read a book, which my books were heavily uh, censored. I wasn't allowed to just read anything. But there was a book that I read, um, and in the beginning of it, it's a bunch of girls at a party, and they were playing with a Ouija board and tip over a candle, and, and one gets burnt. Right. Um. And after I read like the first couple of chapters, I was like, Whoop, throw this book out. Because I was afraid of it. I was like, I don't want to get a demon. Because <laughs> that's how my mom would say it too. She'd be like, oh, sounds like we got a demon. Like if you had a mouse in your house or something, you know, finally find evidence that there's a mouse in there and you got to set a trap for it. My, uh, that's how she would treat it. My, my biggest things were that I can remember of having to get rid of certain things were, were like records. Like, yeah. <laughs> there were certain records out that were known to be demonic and i remember there was a there was an assembly that they even mentioned um led zeppelin stairway to heaven you want to avoid listening to this group because it's known that if you play the record backwards there are demonic messages (laughs) that are clearly told right (laughs) because if it was clear you know um another one that would have been would have been that way would have been um hotel california really i had a friend that was scared of that song Wow. Yeah. And she listened to it all the time because she liked to mess with demons. There was a song and, um, when we were kids. I forgot who sang it, but the song was, Somebody's knocking, should I let him in? Lord, it's the devil, would you look at him? And she's talking about a, a guy in yeah. a, from a horrible relationship. But I always heard that song as the devil it's <laughs> showing, like Satan. Up, showing up at her door. <laughs> what is he doing, like selling Kirby vacuums or something? Like, I don't understand why he'd knock at your door. I feel like he'd let himself in. She said he had blue, eye, uh, blue eyes and blue jeans. And um, yeah, I pictured a demon. I'm totally going to Google that. I pictured <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll do it right now while we're talking here. I, but I pictured <laughs> like a, a demon coming to earth in human form. And that's what she was saying about. Yeah, yeah. I think I've met him, actually. You, I might have married did him. You, did you? <laughs> are, you, are you still married to him, or were you married no, to him No, I don't before? think so, no. So the song no, is... In our uh, relationship, it's the other way. He's the sweet one, I'm the demon. 
It's uh, it's Terry Gibbs. Uh, the song oh, as called. in like from the Bee Gees? Yeah, she's not one of them. Someone. And she was. Oh a, no, she, no. She was a blind woman. They played a piano, and the song is called "Somebody's Knocking." Huh. And um, huh. and apparently it wasn't about the devil. It was. Uh, no. no. So, as much as we were censored about what we were allowed to read growing up, uh-huh. my mom read. Um, I think her name is Margaret Atwood. Don't know who that is. Um, she's an author. And she wrote this book. I can't remember the the name of it. It might have been Bluebeard's Egg. And she uh, she gave this book to me to read. It's like and like I was probably about seventeen or so. She's like, "Oh, this is such a great book. I just read it." In that book, the woman participates in spirit writing, where like you light a candle in front of a mirror, mm-hmm. and then you stare at the flame, and she would have a pen in her hand. And it would like conjure a spirit that would actually write for her. That would still. It would just me conduct out. itself through her. Yeah, and I'm like, why are you giving me this book to read? <laughs> like, this is scary stuff. And I already have a thing. Like, I don't want to. If I get up in the middle of the night to go pee, I don't. I don't want to um, look in the mirror and see something behind me. You know, so I'm gonna yeah. go sideways. I'm gonna avoid it. I hate that when they do that. I'm with you on that one. The. Uh... Mir- it's mirrors in the dark, right? Not just mirrors, but mirrors in the dark. Yeah, but I also I don't want to see a candle in front of a mirror. Right. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to see that either because I'm a little bit. You know, they're still kind of poking around in there somewhere. Like that's gonna lead to that's you're gonna catch a demon. So how was it when you uh, when you had that blackout over there? And you oh, had <laughs> we had a, having to go to the, we had a lot candles of candles or flashlights. We had both. We had both. As it turns out, and there were some candles. We had some candles lit in the kitchen. Not, but not, I was not in the scared bathroom, that... though. No. No, because uh, mirrors. And I was afraid that, you know, I don't like leaving having a bunch of candles lit because I'm afraid that you're going to forget one's lit and burn the house down. <laughs> I'm much more afraid of fire than the dark. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to risk it. Right. But, yeah... I, I'm not a real real fan of candles. Even I'm not, but for the for the fire reason, not right. because of. Demons. But I I won't light one in front of a mirror if it's going to be reflected in a mirror. I just won't do it because I'm still kind of hung up about it. The mirrors. I probably always will be. The mirrors were really scary for me as a kid because um, there were some some kids in my apartment complex who used to like to play Bloody Mary. Yeah. Right? Are you old uh-huh. enough to be familiar with that? Yeah. Yeah. That, I know that stuff. Oh man, I t- probably still wouldn't uh, say that in a mirror alone, at least. No, no, I probably wouldn't either. I got some serious PSD going on here. <laughs> PTSD. Some puts. Some puts. <laughs> <laughs> You're a puts. <laughs> <laughs> You're a puts. But you know the messed up part about that kind of stuff is, isn't it true that the younger you are, that your mind, like you have certain endorphins or something that allows you to have, uh, allows your imagination to be more vivid and colorful than older people. No? In your educational background oh, well, or anything like that? Like, um, that's why kids are able to have imaginary friends? I don't think it would be endorphins that would cause that, but there's probably some synapses that haven't formed that are like okay. you have more uh, less concrete thinking, so okay. that you can you can really believe things that are out there more whimsy. Right, and, and that's stuff. what I think of when mm-hmm. I think of the my friends speaking so passionately about what they saw in that mirror as they did, as they played the Bloody Mary game. Not that they were oh, li- yeah. not that they were mm-hmm. lying, but they probably actually did see something. Well, and there's kind of a certain, um, like, uh, bravado or something that goes along that, that you had an experience, like a personal experience. And that's why everybody would talk about it, but no one wanted to be like, well, it was me. Right. You know, that always be like, it was something I knew. <laughs> and there was always that kind of like, like, I remember there was, there was, um, a guy that came into our congregation and he was a teenager and 
um, he had a real rough childhood and had battled addiction from, you know, probably adolescence or earlier on. And he would, he would love to talk about his experiences. And I was like, you were probably just high, right? And he was like, no, it's a demon. Okay. My mom was like, well, when you mess with those psychedelic drugs, you do let a demon in. That was And she would know. Thing. That was one of the things that uh, completely turned me off to ever even considering touching a joint growing up while other kids were starting to experiment with pot. Like, I just knew yeah. that I did not want to hang out with the demons. It was a gateway drug to hell. It was a gateway drug to hell. <laughs> it was... <laughs> It was, uh, <laughs> what was it? Oh, um, you are, your mind is not at 100%, right? It's like you're leaving the back door open to demons. Yeah, to demonic like influence. yoga. Oh, God, you know, that's the Same right. thing. It's it's the same concept. You can't have that mind open. You got to close it off. <laughs> close it off. <laughs> that is such superstitious <laughs> mumbo jumbo. It was, and I do love some yoga. I do. Yeah. I love some yoga pants. Oh, so Especially. do I. So do I. <laughs> For different reasons. <laughs> for different di- reasons. For different reasons. For one reason. <laughs> Thank you. Whoever uh, whoever was the uh, genius woman or man who made yoga pants fashionable, I just want to take a moment and uh, appreciate you. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out. <laughs> I'd give a shout out. <laughs> for all those asses that actually wear yoga pants to yoga class. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not so much of the ones that don't. It, what is the <laughs> thing with that, though, as a woman? Because I know for guys, I can tell you as a guy – why we love to see women in them but what is it for a woman they're comfortable that's it yeah it's comfort you know and but mm-hmm. you do realize that and they make your butt look good you yeah know? like you just might as well be naked maybe i don't think so but you're not oh, naked yeah. you might as well but be. yeah when they're worn but- right you might as well be naked. When they're worn right, I don't <laughs> think I wear mine right. <laughs> I tell you, I know that I wore uh, my son. My oldest had to have surgery last summer, uh-huh. and so I was dressing for comfort, you know, because we were going to be there for a while and in the hospital today. And uh, I texted my friend. I was like, "This is what it's come to. I'm wearing yoga pants in public, but I wore a cardigan with it to keep it classy because we weren't going to Walmart." <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you have to class it up a little bit so i was wearing a cardigan and a, a decent t-shirt right with it, but it was a very long day and i had been up very late the night i don't think i slept at all the night before but i was like this is what it's come to i don't really wear yoga pants in public because i don't you know for the same reason that guys like to look at it yeah i think you know? women who are wearing them in public and wearing them quote unquote right are just trying to give boners out yeah, they're just trying to conjure some demons. What they're doing? <laughs> Demonic. That's class. what you're doing. Demonic okay. influence, right there. Well, uh, I good re- job. <laughs> the society did say that um, wherever there's porn, there's demons. Yeah. Or anything like that? Yeah, uh, that they took the interview that. Um, oh, which serial killer was it? Ted Bundy. He gave like, uh, you know, because they maybe they Charles were like Manson. heavy into. No, it was Ted Bundy because he was into. Uh, he was very much into scientists studying him because you know of his narcissistic personality disorder. He would he wanted to talk about the things that he had done, like most serial killers do. But he said that you know he had become obsessed with pornography, and had a prolific collection of it, and he was going to. Uh, he was warning people like don't don't start with that because right. you know it it uh dehumanizes people and then once you've done that you can detach from them and then once you've done that then it's like it's a short step from playboy right to you know keeping someone's head in your freezer <laughs> i mean i don't make that connection <laughs> yeah and they got to make everything well they, everything ended up being demonic right like um that was also um Regarding certain sexual practices like anal sex and uh, blowjobs was like defiling the, the bed and um, you're it's uh, an, an unholy act that you're having entertaining demons. You never heard anything like that? No, I never heard any of those things. Why can't they get the shit straight from region to region? I know, right? Well, probably because we just knew not to 
you know, they didn't have. Well, they did talk about it a whole lot, but <laughs> I don't remember that being. They like talked a about everything practice. a whole lot. Yeah. 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 That that some someone went so went uh, far so far as to say that that uh, yeah yeah it might have been in a publication even somebody can let us know somebody in in the comments enlighten us on some of the stuff that we're saying. Uh, we might be full of shit with half of this stuff, huh? Well, yeah, I don't remember that, but I mean, well, it's all shit actually. But <laughs> the whole, the whole thing is shit. But I, it it doesn't surprise me that they would draw that conclusion because you know demons was like the sum of everybody's fear, right? And secret sins being also right at the top, you know. So if you were up to no good. And you got a demon, that would be, that would be blowing your cover. The demons were behind everything, huh? Because, mm-hmm. Like, I remember people, like, really struggling with addiction or mental illness or something. Right. And there would be, like, a little group of sisters that would go to their house, and they would be like, okay, we're going to clean house. And they would, like, throw out books and music and records <laughs> and... And anything that was bought at a secondhand store and anything that was handed down from family, right. you know, every, anything, anything possibly. And they'd be like, okay, Problem now solved. you'll be all right. Yeah. And there was a woman in our congregation who was, she was a hot mess of mental illness. She was schizophrenic and bipolar. She also had some epilepsy thrown in there. Right. I mean, she was, she was really a very pitiful creature and she had a divided household. Her husband wasn't a believer, I think. Her oldest daughter and her son, they weren't, but her youngest daughter was um, involved in the witnesses, and she was a friend of mine. And I remember my mom going out there, and this is a woman who is, like, diagnosed and spends time in a psych hospital on occasion. And my mom is like, well, I'll tell you right now what her problem is. Her problem is she's got all those books. I mean, she'll just read anything. Oh, my God. And she was, you know, she spent a lot of time alone, and so she did have a lot of books. My mom was like, she needs to get rid of about three quarters of that, and then she'll be okay. And I was like, she probably needs like some Risperidol and some lithium, and <laughs> like she needs a little special cocktail just for <laughs> her because we got a lot of things that we're putting together here. A lot of things aren't firing up there. She needs supplement. <laughs> my, my mom like knows this stuff, right? And she's still like, it's a demon. A demon? Well, you know, that's part of it. And then there's the demon. <laughs> what was it? I'm like... <laughs> Wasn't that my friend? I, I, I uh, uh, this text message that, um, I'll oh, forget it. I don't know where I was going with that. Never mind. Carry Demons on. were not in text messages, right? No, I was going to talk about uh, my friend <laughs> saying something to me in, in, in a we're texting each other and he said something like it was regarding Prince being dead and he's like you know what this means right and I typed back demons oh, I saw that <laughs> demons <laughs> that's like he first said demons you know I always got kind of excited when they would talk about you know demons and stuff or like you did? it would there was kind of like a little jittery kind of nervousness yeah it was kind of exciting it. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I would be like, oh, you know, like scared in a good way. Right. So, yeah, we're coming up to the end of the show here. And uh, before we go, um, we just want you guys who are listening, who have stayed listening to this point, thank you, first of all. And hopefully you guys liked it. And uh, we promise that they're going to get better. And we got some good topics that we're going to discuss that are lined up. And some good guests. And some good guests. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want to give I don't want to give away any of that. Yeah, don't, mind. don't. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we got some good stuff lined up. And what do you, you want to say anything? Yeah, I just, thanks for listening. And I hope you had a good hour long nap from the beginning of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who didn't make it to the stop button in time, congratulations. Glad that you did find a way to lighten up. Demons have the best ideas. They really do. <laughs> Uh, we're probably scaring the hell out of those people now. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Just say a prayer. Say a prayer. Right, be that's fine. right. Say a prayer. Uh, mm-hmm. Smash your laptop. Put it under the car. Drop your laptop mm-hmm. and throw it in the garbage. Everything will be okay. 
just call out in the name of Jehovah. Yes. He'll save you. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine until next time. Until next time. All right, Chelsea. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. We're out. <laughs>